Uh, time for the dryphysics.com video presentation, a retraction video of sorts. I'm going <coughs> to delist, <coughs> make unlisted a previous video I made where I asserted that these velocities were wrong based on how I viewed um, an experiment by still a complete asshole. It's still a fake piece of crap, blah, blah, blah. But I was wrong, okay, to present it the way I did in terms of this produced this piece of crap video. <laughs> yeah, this. Now it's got great frame rates. <laughs> okay, so um, the actual video doesn't demonstrate what I claim in the sense that it does demonstrate the velocities don't match, but I didn't consider the fact that both objects are accelerating at a different rate. One object is only falling one unit of distance, the other one is four units of distance, so one object has got its much higher velocity than the other one because it hasn't fallen as far. So you really, because they're gaining velocity, they're increasing their velocity every bit they move, they go faster and faster, uh, you really have to get just average velocities, and I was really getting an unfair average, so that would be the right way to say it. It's uh, He's obviously got one of these doing what I cell did. phone cameras that, you know, does this really nice, see how nice that is? I mean, it's really nice. Uh, All right. Instead, he did this fake experiment. So it's still a garbage experiment. Okay, so we'll go over other reasons why it's a piece of shit. So, yes, I only need the one reason when I thought the velocities were way off. Now, the velocities, in my opinion, are still off. Um, but it doesn't, you know, they're not off as dramatically as I claimed. And so I guess I'll have to put the images in here. So I guess I will do that. I'll take a pause. All right. Unfortunately, this image isn't quite as good as I, I ended up with this little crap. <laughs> you know, the zero zeros in there. But if you look at the two images, what you might seem obvious to you is that somehow this spring looks like there's a lot more spring showing than this spring. So the spring on the left, there seems to be less spring showing, obviously indicating it's more compressed. And yet the two needles read the exact same reading. So it's the exact same reading, but there's clearly the, the one on the right looks much bigger than the one on the left. And so I have another image that illustrates that. All right, so here it is with a ruler. And uh, so you can sort of, this sort of gives you the indication that there's, if you look at the one on the right, that the needle isn't really pointing straight. It's pointing in this kind of weird angle and that there's more space. Now, the thing that really gives it away is that the, is the pink part. So if you look at the pink part and where it covers well, the ruler sort of tells you it's not a straight line. So if you look at the line of the ruler, it cuts across a different portion of the zip tie. So in the left-hand side, the ruler goes over the zip tie. On the right-hand side, the ruler is below the zip tie, indicating the weights aren't at the same heights. All right, so I have another image. All right, so this is probably the best of the images. Uh, let me move it so you can see the base. That's the important part. So you can see that nothing lines up. The little zeros aren't lined up. The, the little white, the clear zero is clearly over the pink, not over the pink. The one is further down on the left side than on the right side. You can see the number two on the right side. You can't see the number two on the left side indicating that, yes, one spring is much more compressed. Now, let's understand it's at least two or three millimeters, and the entire compression of the spring, because you use a really stiff spring, the spring's entire compression in the experiment is only a centimeter. So three millimeters is huge when you're considering that you're talking about only 10 millimeters of total compression. So it's really way off. Uh, considering. So he should have used a softer spring. I mean, using such a stiff spring means that you're trying to do all of this detail in a tiny amount of space. So if he used a spring that would have compressed five or six centimeters, 
it would all of these little details wouldn't have mattered but the little details matter when you're using um, you know a spring with such a high compression of such a stiff spring so it's clearly reading exactly the same number and yet clearly one spring is more compressed than the other just a fact so it's still a junk experiment still garbage it's just garbage for a different reason so the fact is I claimed that the one mass was going a little bit faster and on top of that the zip tie is in the wrong position on both of them it's not at the same place on both of them one is a little lower and it's a little higher on the other one and so it's deceiving you based on what the real distance is uh, of the actual compression of the spring so real crap experiment so we'll just go over some of the uh, the stuff that was in the other video maybe I'll just play the end of the video and just add this bit so maybe I'll do that and save myself some talking some extra talking uh, so we'll get rid of this and I'll show I mean this is you know <laughs> it's not much math but it's sort of uh, important uh, and you really can't see that very well. Hmm. Let's see if I can highlight it in some way. Yeah, that would be better if it came out a little brighter. All right, so um, this is just two comparisons here. So this is the one pound comparison. This is the four pounds. So you, when you drop them one centimeter, you double the, mat, the weight. So the four pounds goes to eight pounds after one centimeter. After one centimeter, the one pound goes to two pounds. Then you go four pounds. Okay, you want to double the weight. You go four centimeters high. And then you go 16 centimeters high. And then you go 64 centimeters high. So you're always going four times higher. So four times, and the same thing's happening with the four pounds. So you double the weight to eight pounds. Then you double it again to 16 pounds at four centimeters. And then you're at 32 pounds. All right, at 16 centimeters. So at 16 centimeters, this four pounds will weigh 32 pounds. That'll be its impulse weight. And for the one pound to weigh 32, I'd have to go, uh, you know, four times 64. I, I mean, 64 times, no, 16 times. <clears throat> well, it doesn't matter. Uh, you would just stop at 64. Why, why hurt my brain? It's 220, whatever. So um, if we just say that 64 inches is more, it's four times the 16. So if we do this 64 here, that's four times 16. All right. So at 16 centimeters, the four pounds is 32 pounds. At, at, at 64 centimeters, this the two pound is only 16 pounds so it's 16 to 32 clearly the one mass only weighs half as much okay when it's dropped from four times the height as the four mass okay and uh, so for the rest I'll just play what I ended the other video with but <clears throat> and again I'll just say if you think your video is good enough Submit it as a paper, right? You would you would expect me if I did the experiment to submit it as a paper, right? That I'm going to do the experiment good enough that I could submit it to a journal, and they would accept it because it's a perfectly, you know, it, it's uh, detailing something that um, hasn't been proven yet. So so why don't you do that if you think it's good science? Submit it as a paper, uh, as a proof. Uh, all right, so let's jump to the end of this video where I explain gravity again, <laughs> okay, over and over. <clears throat> so we need this on. Come on. You can do it, computer. Thank you, computer. All right, so maybe I'll just make that full screen, frankly. And make it all easier. And then I can just lift it up here, I think. And that should be close enough. Oh, yeah, I ought to do the funny part where the 
four pounds on the scale thing. It's the ridiculous part where they believe such nonsense. Get rid of this. All right, so this is the simple argument. And, and it goes back to the simple argument that look, they really believe that if you take a scale, right, and you put, you have two one mass objects here, two identical objects, you put one of them on, you have one energy, okay? And then you do the exact same action, you put the second one on, and now you have four energies. I mean, that's, you know. It's so fucking stupid. You're saying, no, they can't really believe that. So we're talking about... A so it's, they're really basically saying that 200 pounds is four times the energy of 100 pounds. So if I put 100 pounds on a scale and it has a certain amount of energy, they're saying all I have to do is put 200 pounds on the scale and have four times the energy. I mean, it's ridiculous. One mass and a four mass. Okay, four mass, one foot, one mass four feet all right the simple truth is this will fall in one second let's say let's say we put it at the height that it falls in one second so it's in the gravity one second then it hits it gets 9.8 velocity because it was in the gravity one second it goes 4.9 distance what happens here okay two seconds is all it takes four times the height only two times the 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 See, now, in his experiment, he could have shown us a couple of examples, pulled the camera back further, shown us a couple of examples of the objects just falling naturally, videotaped it, and we could just time it then. You could just time whether it was the two seconds. Because it's just an absolute fact that in gravity, it'll take two seconds for something to drop four times the distance. That's an absolute fact. So you know you have twice the velocity if it's exactly twice the time. If it's twice the time... It's twice the velocity. Um, so it goes 4.9 here. Okay, it goes 4.9 here. And it goes 4.9 here. You know, these are all 4.9s. Okay. Um, but what does it have in velocity? Well, it has 9.8 here. So here is one half the velocity. Here. I mean, why can't they deal with this argument? It's an absolute fact. You're going to go half the velocity when you've only traveled one quarter of the distance, the total distance, and you're already going half the velocity. So you have to understand that that second travel, you can't be collecting units of force for every unit of distance because you're only going to collect 9.8. In that much larger amount of distance, you're only going to add 9.8 to your velocity. You're not going to add any more than that. You're going to add one unit of velocity. And it's going to land with 19.6. So half the velocity is here, here, here. So it's obviously not gaining the same as it gained here. In this 4.9, it got 9.8. And in this whole giant, uh, what is that, 15? In this whole 15 meters, it only got 9.8. So in this whole 15 meters, it only gained 9.8. That's all it gained, 9.8. 15 meters for 9.8. I mean, isn't it kind of obvious that there's no way... So it got 9.8 in 4.9 meters, and then it got 9.8 in 15 meters. Again, it doesn't make any sense. The 1, okay, got... Okay, one unit of energy here, and one unit of energy here, and one unit of energy here, and one unit of energy here. So it's 1 times 4. It's obviously only one times two. One times the time, two seconds. One times the two, and this is obviously four times one. So this has obviously got twice the energy that this has. Twice so the weight. tell you they have the same. Twice the weight, twice the energy. It doesn't work any other way. Uh, two pounds is twice as heavy as one pound. It's twice the amount of work can be done with that much weight. You can't do four times the work. It's just silly. Energy. It's just stupid. It's moronic. It's retarded. It's fucking goddamn unreasonable. That's the word. It's unreasonable to think that in two seconds... 
even though it only got 19.6, even though it was going half the velocity here, okay, that somehow it collected four times the energy. And no, it didn't. Didn't happen, won't happen, can't happen. And that's why in 300 years, with all of physics's men, you know, all their horses and all their men, they can't put this Humpty Dumpty lie together again, okay? They can't go back in time and fool people because, well, they can't, they can, because obviously that's, everybody's fooled. Yeah, so that's the joke. Um, <clears throat> but the, the truth is, is that in 300 years, they haven't proven it because it can't be proven because it doesn't happen. And so go ahead, um, you know, publish your really ratty and crappy experiment and I will counter publish the critique that points out look, the moron's too stupid to even use a spring that compresses more than a centimeter. So he's forcing a very detailed thing to be measured in a very small amount of space. Where if he had done it with a, a, a less stiff spring, then the difference between a half and a full would have been centimeters instead of millimeters and then if you're a little bit off it don't going to matter so a millimeter off here a millimeter off there won't make any difference but it makes a big difference when your entire compression of the spring is only one mil uh, one centimeter so anyway junk experiment blah blah old <laughs> but, but you know it's not my fault it's not my bad that you're idiots that you're fools and dupes okay that's probably enough all right, so, um, yeah, so I, I will concede I jumped a little too quickly. Uh, I didn't think about the fact that the velocities are constantly changing and that the average velocity I was showing was unfair. And the only average velocity you can do is the velocity right near impact. But obviously, when you start doing the velocity right near impact, you start running into all kinds of frame rate problems because you're trying to do a tiny amount of distance. And that usually doesn't work very well. So anyway, enough of the video. Till the next time and such. So my apologies for the incorrect analysis, but the conclusion is the same. The video they produced was still a piece of shit okay and it's right there in the picture obviously this spring is compressed more than this spring obviously and it's a few millimeters you know two three four two three anyway and three millimeters out of ten millimeters is a lot that's a lot of error so it reads as if these two springs are sp compressed exactly the same. The little thing is pointing right on the three line. They're both saying it's the same weight. Those two springs are not the same compression. Fact. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's some other thing to measure it based on. Well, the one is the giveaway. Yeah, and like I said, I can't. Um, is my arrow here? Let's see if my arrow is here. I could use my arrow, but it's not here. All right, well, anyway, you can kind of see where the ones are. You can see that the one one is really far from the pink, and the other one is really close to the pink. That's the big, that's how big a difference, that's how off it is. And the very fact that the two shows, and the two doesn't even show on the ruler in the other case. Clearly, one spring is more compressed than the other. All right, so till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Get rid of that. And oh, frozen screen. Great. <laughs>